Before we get to the fun time that was Texas Frightmare, we had to take a plane over. Our original flights from 2019 did not roll over, but our tickets to the convention did. We were lucky enough that we landed a direct flight this time. To keep ourselves entertained, we stuck to the essentials in the downloaded playlist. We got off the plane and were swooped up quick by our friends. Driving a down around Dallas is like being in a movie, specifically Robocop, Mike's favorite movie. That's probably because it was filmed in Dallas despite being set in Detroit. Please put down your weapon. You have 20 seconds to comply. I think you'd better do what he says, Mr. Kenny. You now have 15 seconds to comply. You are in direct violation of Penal Code 113, Section 9. You now have five seconds to comply. Four, three, two, one. I am now authorized. You might recognize some of the buildings in that scene as the Dallas skyline. The first place we ate at in Dallas was this place called Nuno's. The food there was ridiculously good. I got the Texas burrito, which was delicious. We all enjoyed our meals, but the best thing was that there was a masa pan shake. The next day, we stopped at a restaurant called El Palote. They had a full panaderia. When we ordered our food, the number card was a loteria card, so we knew the spot had to be lit. Maya got the torta, and I got the flautorito, aka a burrito stuffed with three flautas, and it was delicious. We also got to hit up one of my favorite skate shops in all of Texas, the Point Skate Shop. Here is Mike in his natural habitat, checking out skate shoes. At the moment, he stands no chance of mating. We walked around Deep Elm a bit more and window shopped, stopping to check out some of the murals. This clockwork duck was pretty rad. Here's Laura and Victor checking out some of the murals. There is also a piece dedicated to the singer of Power Trip. Rest in peace, Riley Gale. We are not from Dallas, Texas. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Before we knew it, it was Frightmare time. Check out our costumes. First things first, plan A, we were gonna park in the overflow parking and take a shuttle. Turns out that was not gonna work. Only like 15 people fit on each shuttle and they're only running every 30 minutes. So that's not happening. Plan B is walk, but damn, 57 minutes. That has to be wrong. It's a four minute drive normally, so it must be Hampton, easy, right? Whap, he comes here. Marshall, whap, he comes here. Long, whap, he comes here. Where are you gonna run on this thing? And then if you're gonna pass like that, whoom, 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 we just keep going back like this. So here we are, crossing grass and freeway alike. Don't mind us, we're just covered in blood and waving chainsaws around. No big deal, right? Built one of the greatest video game heroes of all time, and now he's back. Frogger on CD-ROM. The, the trek was not quite what we expected, and we ended up hitting several dead ends before getting the right way sorted out. Finally, we made it to the hotel after about 30 minutes of trekking around in the Dallas heat. And that sweet, sweet air conditioning. The first day was not too packed, so we made it a point to meet the whole Dawn of the Dead crew that had come to the convention. First, we got to meet Gaylene Ross. She was super sweet. Let me make a point. You have not listened. You have not listened to this situation for three weeks. Along with acting in Dawn of the Dead, she was also in Mad Men, Creep Show, and went on to direct as well. Next, we went to meet Tom Savini, who was in some films including Maniac. And Dawn of the Dead. He's a classic practical effects master. Scott Reininger was playing hard to get, but we got around to him. Why do these people keep them here? 
Because they still believe there's respect in dying. His performance in Dawn of the Dead was fantastic, and actually inspired the character for Leon in Resident Evil 2. Our friends were off getting photos and autographs from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre cast, and came to meet up with us later. This dude came up to us and asked to be killed, said he was asking everyone if they would kill him for the sake of being a red shirt. Improper red shirt tradition, of course. Day two, we swore not to get so sweaty, so we went for plan C, aka BGD. We stopped by the shuttle stop again, and the line was growing, so we figured it was time to try inner terminal shuttles. This took us on a serious detour around the airport too, but at least we were in a bus with AC. And we don't, we don't even call this like 34, 43, 46, any of those numbers. We call it just BGD, just big guy defense, that's all. We still had to walk through some parking garages, but nothing compared to the previous day. <laughs> no. <laughs> Laura, how do you feel? Um, okay. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and now we got a little line of people behind us. <laughs> We found some fellow Resident Evil nerds, including this goofy Heisenberg and the shy hunk. Later, we bumped into a fellow chainsaw wielder who agreed to cut my head off. Overall, we were in for a much less sweaty of a time than the day before. But not less scary by any means. We got some quality homie hangs in along the way. Later, we got to see Lance Hendrickson. He was a riot, cracking jokes left and right, and could not get enough of the service animal dogs in the front. You may remember him from such roles as in the Alien franchise. We were pretty close to the front for the panel and made it in the obligatory stage selfie. Next, we saw the Carl Weathers panel. He was probably the most humble and pleasant celebrity we've seen in a panel. And he's still ripped as all hell. You son of a bitch. Day three. We went back to the drawing board, this time to retry plan A, to actually take the hotel shuttle for the first time on the last day. We saw Jason walking it. Here he is, trying to cool off. Until whatever this thing is came through, stealing the spotlight. Surprisingly enough, we only saw one They Live Alien, and he was a good sport, stayed in character until he said thank you for the picture. We got some new horror shirts from this booth that had all kinds of swag. I was actually the first to learn to go autograph. Look at those quick fingies. Fingies? <laughs> That's cool, I look forward to that. On our last day, most of our money was spent, so we spent more of our time checking out costumes and people watching. This witch king of Agmar was super friendly despite bringing ruin, turning hope to despair, and victory to death. Slenderman came prowling through as well. Hey, it looks tasty. I want the video camera. I need the video camera. Huh? Is it on? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> There's rats everywhere. Rats everywhere! <laughs> Horror fans seem to be some of the most friendly and welcoming people out there. Thank you. The convention had movies, toys, posters, esteemed artists, celebrities, great cosplays, and a sense of community. <laughs> After a weekend full of horror and bizarre adventures, it was time to finally head home. We lucked out and ended up on an earlier flight with tons of legroom.